Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks across the country out there. This is another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of weather analysis and discussion for the next two weeks. It's our Friday afternoon, 12 noon. I'm meteorologist D.D. from weatherwisk.com, all-around snappy dresser and intellectually stimulating partner. I'll be talking about weather here for the next uh, a few minutes and uh, lots to talk about, so let's get right to it. In this video, we'll be talking about the uh, eastern U.S. warm spell developing, this uh, western cold uh, spell developing, and whether or not and how fast the pattern is going to change. Obviously, the GFS uh, shows severe cold coming in after January 15th, first to the plains, then the Midwest and the East Coast, and we'll discuss whether or not that's BS or not. So let's get right to it. Here's the European model from early this morning. This is uh, the next 24 hours. There are two features here I'm pointing out here. Uh, the first one is obviously going to be uh, this one right here. That's actually over Texas and the southwestern states right now. And then the what next, next one coming up here, coming out of the eastern Pacific and the Gulf of Alaska. And uh, each one of these features is going to pull up increasingly warmer and warmer air because all of these features are going to be tracking uh, from the plain state into the Great Lakes. So uh, this is uh, 96 hours out. So this is feature number two. It's now here. And of course, uh, feature number one, which was here, is now up in this area and went this direction. So it's pulled up some more warm air, as you can see. But here comes feature number two. It's going to do the same thing. So we'll see what happens here. And this is... Uh, uh, January 9th, right in the evening, and there's our big feature number two over Texas. Now, the GFS doesn't have this as a monster closed low, but it has a huge trough there. And both models are pulling up the southeast ridges. You can clearly see here, uh, coming up from the southeast, pulling up the warm air, because this system is going like this, over the top of the southeast ridge. So it turns quite warm. And this is uh, a day, uh, when is this? is. Uh, I get, yeah, this is uh, day 8, I should say, for January uh, 11th. And we can see our huge southeast ridge. There's our deep trough here, um, right in this area here. This is system number 3, the trough, and here's our eastern Pacific ridge. So we're back to the pattern we saw back in early December. And the surface maps look very impressive here. We can obviously see this is a gigantic high. This is for day 5 here. Off the coast, wham, 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 pulling up those southeast winds. Here's all the cold air. Uh, southwest winds, all the cold air way to the north. This is very. Mu this is January 8th, and then the uh, next map, which is going to be for January uh, 10th, two days later, we still have our gargantuan high um, off the east coast right there. Here's our front running like this. And again, even Iowa's warm, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, they're all pretty mild. And then down here, it's super warm in here. And then finally, as we go out to... Uh, this is uh, day 9 now for the January 12th. There's our enormous high, all still sitting off the coast, as you can see right here. And look at these winds. This is plus 12, 850 up to Virginia Beach, plus 10 through Richmond, almost to D.C. Those are temperatures in the 60s, maybe even 70 degrees. 50s all the way up into here as well. And the, uh, this is a, a front, a weak front like this. Very impressive uh, warming coming for the eastern United States. A lot of cold coming for the west coast. Pretty cold temperatures here in Seattle as well. Now, this is a comparison of the GFS and the European. I should say the European on the left-hand side, as you can see. This here is the European. Let me uh, point it out. EC. And this is the GFS. And both these are both here for uh, January uh, 13th, I believe. Yes, this is January 13th. Both models are in strong agreement, as you can see. They both have the southeast ridge. They both have the polar vortex way to the north. You can see that right here, right? They both have the southeast, the eastern Pacific ridge, and they both have the trough right here. Very, very strong agreement. So, so far, so good. All right? Now, here's the uh, GFS at uh, day uh, 9. There's the polar vortex way up there. But what's happening is the model is beginning to shift um, the eastern Pacific ridge towards the west coast here. And that's dropping the trough a little further to the east. And we'll see what happens with the, <coughs> with the GFS the next slide. This is the GFS ensemble uh, at day at 8. And the model is in pretty good agreement with the European. Notice where the ridge is in the eastern Pacific and the Gulf of Alaska. That's where it stays. But what happens is we go to the next slide. This is now day 10. Well, let me call this up. Remember, the ridge was out here. Now the model is moving the ridge towards the west coast. It's trying to develop a positive PNA. 
And that, in turn, allows the vortex, which is way up in here, to drop to here. And eventually, the vortex drops to here. And that, uh, that in turn, drives the southeast ridge. As this comes south, wham, wham, it drives the southeastern ridge off the east coast, and everybody turns very, very cold. That's what the GFS was showing from early this morning. And this is the, for uh, the January 14th. There's the vortex. Remember, it started way up here, uh, way up here, and now it's down in here. So there you go. We have, we have, here's our P&A. And, the, and we're off to the races. The model has it getting very cold. And this is now by uh, January 16th. You see the purple dots? You can follow the path of the polar vortex coming southward very nicely from here all the way down to here. Now we have a PNA, we have a negative NAO, the cold air, the spreading everybody everybody's ooh looks great but the problem is and here's the cold the 850 temperatures you can see how impressive it is as well as the cold air coming southward now that's all dependent upon the polar vortex being pushed southward the question is is the polar vortex going to get that far south that's the way to get the cold air in i don't know if it's going to get that far south this is the gfs ensembles for uh january 15th and it does the same thing as you can see the polar vortex starts here and now it ends up here and because it does that the southeast ridge is driven off the coast. And of course, our ridge is now coming inland towards the west coast of North America, as opposed to being out here. So the GFS ensembles are doing the same thing as the operational GFS. So again, looking at the ensembles doesn't tell us anything. They both suffer from the cold bias of the model. This is the European ensembles. The European ensemble, uh, yeah, for the 11 to 15 day, uh, does not show uh, the same thing. We can see our ridge in the southeast. Here's our trough here. You can see that. And the um, ridge in the eastern Pacific stays out here in the eastern Pacific. It is not on the west coast. And that's an important difference. So that's, so that's why the trough stays here. So this does not support, uh, this is not in agreement with the GFS at all. Here's the CFS from mid-December. Now remember, I pointed this out earlier and I talked about this. I showed the CFS showing a pretty cold January. Well, you can see. Remember, see how cold it was looking here? Turns out that's completely wrong. Well, why did the CFS turn out to be wrong? One of the reasons is because it missed the Pacific jet. Now, you can see this is the uh, this is the jet stream at 200 millibars. And we can go through the time frame here. This is uh, December uh, 13th, December 23rd, December excuse me, 18th, 23rd. And you can see what's happening here. Look at these winds have just gone howling, exploding upwards. And you can see uh, the model is forecasting... Uh, all the way, uh, this was actual, excuse me, this is actual reality, December 28th through January 1st. Look at these winds. Now, that orange and red here, that's 1670 meters per second, which is 120 to 140 knots. That's really howling Pacific jet. And that energy just slams into the west coast of North America and the eastern Pacific and produces a trough there and a ridge over the eastern United States. The CFS missed this completely, did not see it at all. And that's why the CFS January forecast is busted. So if we look at the CFS, we compare it to the MJO, back in mid and late December when the CFS consistently showed cold temperatures over the central and eastern U.S., the MJO forecasts were consistently in the warm phase. In other words, the MJO was saying that the CFS is full of crap. Let's take a look at it. This is the actual uh, MJO plots here. This is, as you can see, November all the way to January 3rd. So right now, yesterday, the MJO was here in phase four. See that? It was in phase two. See that? Now, what does phase four look like in January? What does the pattern look like? We'll see. This is the pattern, okay, for, for the January in phase four. In phase four, the January has a trough on the West Coast and a gigantic ridge on the eastern United States. Well, that's what's coming, folks. That's the pattern which is coming. So the MJO is turning out to be correct, and the CFS is turning out to be wrong. Now, later on, what happens is that the MJO, this is the GFS here, as you can see it, the MJO goes here, and then around, and then around, and then around, and eventually it's in phase 7 and 8, as you can see. Now, phase 7 and 8 are very good patterns for January, but this is, this is the 18th. This is after the 15th of January, and we can take a look at what those patterns look like. This is the uh, GFS ensemble, and it does the same thing. Now, of course, what happens is as you go out in time, you remember this is the 18th, the model goes like this, then it curves back towards zero. But it may not do that. It may stay out here, so we have to wait and see. But it's getting that way, you know, as we go further out in time, the model is stronger with the MJO impulse. So this is a pretty big impulse here. It really brings it out to in strong intensity and swings it around. So we'll see. Now, what does that look like? Let me clear this. Now, this is the MJO pattern here for phase uh, 8 in uh, January, as you can see. 
and uh, we can see very nice uh, let me call off my marker here so you can draw it in this is a trough here a gigantic ridge on the west coast and then a big trough in the eastern united states and a negative nao so this is a great pattern here for january for this phase assuming it happens this is phase one i believe phase eight or phase one in january and uh, this is more of the same big ridge here trough in the eastern united states this is a good snowstorm pattern here very nice if we and if we in fact get it Okay, and then this is February. This is phase two. If that trend were to continue in phase two here, we would be phase two, and this would be for February. Now, this is a big assumption. This is a very big assumption, but this is a great pattern here for Midwest and East Coast storms, if it in fact is correct. We'll see. Now, let's talk about the QBO. Now, uh, one of the reasons I believe that the second half of the winter is going to turn out okay, if you remember, this is from the winter forecast, was the QBO. And the argument was that the QBO is going to be rising towards neutral as we get late in the winter. So we wanted to find out what the QBO values were. So in October, let me call this up, this was the value here. And this was in November. Now remember, it was way negative here in late summer into the autumn. And then it was, it was new it was going to be rising. In December, the new readings came out a couple of days ago. It's now minus 10. So we had huge jumps from here and then from here. So this is a big jump in the last two months. Now what does that mean? Well... My argument was that as the QBO moves towards zero, uh, there are only a certain number of winters which where we had a very strong negative QBO that moved towards zero or above minus 10 in the late in the winter. And these were the winters of January 04, 0304, 8990, uh, 8485, 7980, and 7071. So that's what the argument was when I made my original winter forecast. Now this was the pattern in all those Decembers. Okay, this is when we had. Um, a very strong negative QBOs in August and September. The December pattern was always warm for all these maps. All of them. Every case. No exceptions. You can see how warm it was in December. Very warm conditions here. Now, in um, this was had a, this once the pattern flipped. Once the QBO went to minus 10 or minus 5 or 0 this is the pattern we saw here in January we saw a huge amount of blocking up in here much colder pattern for the eastern United States the jet stream being suppressed so that's why it's important to see if that's actually going to happen these are the temperatures this is showing the shifting pattern here in January we can still see pretty warm up in, in up in this area in here we can still see pretty warm in here but it can definitely getting colder over the northeast and over the Pacific Northwest that's and then for February we saw more of the same a bit of blocking here as you can see a big trough running this way a flat ridge over the southeast big block up in here so this is also a pretty good pattern here for February assuming the QBO in fact got moves towards zero which it looks like it's going to do and this is what the temperature looked like pretty cold looking map for February so I believe the pattern shift is coming between that and the MJO but it won't be before January 15th. So in summary, the rapid advance of the cold into the East Coast by the GFS is not to be believed. Because of the model cold bias, the European does not agree. The MGO clearly says no, but it says it might happen later after the 15th of January. And because all this cold air is showing up after the GFS model has its truncation, when the resolution shifts from after 192 hours to the really crappy resolution. Now, if the MGO reaches phase 6 or 7 after January 15th, the cold pattern will return to the eastern U.S. If. It might collapse. We don't know that. And finally, <clears throat> the collapsing QBO should allow for more weakening of the Pacific jet. That's what I'm counting on. Between that and the MGO going phase 6 or 7, I believe we have still have some hope left for the winter after January 15th, but not before then, and it's going to get pretty darn warm before that happens in the eastern half of the U.S. and especially on the East Coast. This is meteorologist D.T. from weatherrisk.com. I'll talk to you soon.